What if I told you that the first Doctor Strange movie originally had a totally different plot, where the Ancient One was operating out of a Chinese restaurant, training Strange in magic and how to locate his missing sister? Well, that's the movie we'll be discussing today as we break down the development, plot, and evolution of the first draft of Doctor Strange. The year was 2009, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe was in its early days. While the studio had enlisted writers for their next few projects that were all well underway, they were also looking to the future, hiring a group of writers to try and tackle their more at-the-time obscure characters like Black Panther, Vision, and Doctor Strange. By 2010, Marvel hired the duo of Thomas Dean Donnelly and Joshua Oppenheimer, who were coming off writing Conan and an ill-fated adaptation of Uncharted Drake's Fortune to write the film script, which is unrecognizable to the Doctor Strange origin movie we eventually got. Before we discuss how the film evolved into its final form, let's take a deep dive into that script and the film's original plot. Our story begins some time ago. Ten-year-old Stephen Strange and his sister, Donna, swim in a pond outside of their farmhouse. Donna dares her little brother to dive to the bottom, but Strange sees something glowing down there and is spooked. Donna dives down herself and gets sucked into what looks like a star field. The police drain the pond and search for her, but no body ever shows up. Donna Strange is gone. Years later, Strange is the head neurosurgeon at Hudson General Hospital, and he carries himself with the swagger of a demigod, sleeping with staff, firing residents who don't already perform like doctors, and deciding to operate on other doctors' patients when he feels that they didn't do all they can. During one of these surgeries, Strange sees blinding white lights that look like stars, and despite this risky procedure he's performing being a success, the experience leaves Strange shaken to his core. Driving home, he begins to see the lights again, and a vision of a girl who looks just like Donna right in front of his car. He swerves to avoid her, and hits a pole which falls on his car, frying his hands and arms with electricity, leaving him severely impaired, unable to perform neurosurgery anymore. He tries to fix his hands, but winds up bankrupting himself in the process, and loses everything. Three years later, Strange is working as a backroom surgeon for criminals. One night, he sees the lights again, and they lead him down an alley through a brick wall, which immediately explodes. Inside, he finds an injured old man, known only as the Ancient One, on the verge of death and his protector, a woman named Jade. Strange rushes to try and save the man, and Jade is in disbelief that a normal person was able to stumble upon this place. Just then, they're ambushed by a creature that, to the untrained eye, is invisible. Strange can't see it. At the climax of this battle, Strange's hands begin to glow, stunning the unseen creature, allowing Jade to deliver a killing blow. Jade then forces Strange to heal the Ancient One, his wound tissue is black, something Strange has never seen before. The old man touches the doctor's arm, and Strange realizes his hands are now rock steady, like he was never injured. He finishes the procedure and begins to ask questions about what he saw, but he's quickly knocked out by Jade, who's distrustful of this person who claims to be totally normal, yet can cast spells. The Ancient One, however, is intrigued. The next morning, Strange wakes up to find a takeout menu for a Chinese restaurant in his apartment. Written on it is a note that tells him that if he goes there, all his questions will be answered. Upon going, he's greeted by Jade and the Ancient One, who enlists Strange to go on a delivery run with him to a mental hospital. When he's there, Strange meets a patient who can seemingly disappear and reappear at will, and talks about hallucinating the same lights that he does. Totally exasperated by all of this, Strange leaves. On his way out, though, as a token of gratitude, the Ancient One gifts him a medallion called the Eye of Agamotto. Strange nods off on the subway ride home when the Eye activates, waking Strange up. He sees floating lights streaming into the car, and passengers surround a seemingly dead body. Behind him is Carl Mordo, another pupil of the Ancient One, who reveals that the body on the ground is Strange's. He's dead. Right now, he exists in the astral plane. The eye is designed to reveal the truth, and it figured that Strange needed to die to know the truth. Mordo and Strange then teleport to Stonehenge, where they see a vision of thousands of years ago, where sorcerers are trying to hold back a powerful entity known as Dormammu from breaking into our dimension. 
Mordo explains that catastrophes like Pompeii and Chernobyl are the result of Dormammu almost managing to break through, but if he fully managed to make it into our dimension, it would spell the end of everything. Strange asks Mordo why he's showing him all of this. Mordo smiles and tells Strange that he's their number one draft pick. Strange snaps awake inside of his body, still surrounded by people, and rushes out of the train. The Ancient One greets him, and they return to the restaurant, where the old man leads Strange through a tiny utility closet as they exit into a massive atrium, lined with 99 doors of every color. This is the Sanctum Sanctorum, the Ancient One's base of operations. Sitting at the nexus between dimensions, every door is a portal to another dimension or place. Of the 99, there's a sole black door, and it must remain closed. That is a portal to the Dark Dimension, a place that corrupts souls. He continues to explain that the lights Strange has been seeing are actually the points of intersection between dimensions. It's an ability that only a precious few possess, called the Sight. Which means the lights he saw underwater as a boy were real. Donna's death, which up to this point Strange had been pinning on himself, wasn't his fault. The Ancient One reveals that she's been taken somewhere that isn't this plane, but he's never sensed her in his travels. Strange begs to learn how to find her. The Ancient One tells him that once he learns the art of magic, he'll be ready, and sends him off to learn a teleportation spell. Meanwhile, Mordo's body lies next to an ornate hourglass. His twin sister, Alana, enters the room as the final grain falls. Mordo shoots up, enraged, trying to attack her before coming to his senses and revealing that he went to the Dark Dimension and has almost found what he was searching for, the Orb of Agamotto. But somebody else has also been looking for it, somebody working with Dormammu. The next morning, the Ancient One sends Strange off to meet Cagliostro, the flamboyant Italian sorcerer. As Strange and Cagliostro enter his hut, the Elder casts a brand new spell, revealing all of the magical residue from every spell cast in the past day. He hands Strange an hourglass of his own, and explains that time moves differently in his astral form, and his body can only lie dead there for so long before his forms separate and he actually dies. The hourglass tracks that time. Cagliostro immediately blows Neurotoxin into Strange's face, killing him and separating him from his body. He looks at a wall in the hut. In his physical form, there was a mural made of illegible writing, but now it's rendered in three dimensions and seemingly goes on forever. This is the Book of Vishanti. It contains the knowledge of every sorcerer who's walked the earth. Cagliostro lifts this mural from the wall and sends it into Strange's mind. He wakes up in his body, now with white temples, but also knowing the instructions to every spell in that book. Strange enters a training montage where he learns and hones his abilities like teleportation and transmutation from the Mordo twins, Talo the Pygmy Shaman, Alfaisal the Robed Mystic, and the Ancient One. The magical prodigy and all of his teachers, sans the Ancient One, celebrate his progress in an Italian restaurant. But Strange is distant, thinking about Donna. Despite it breaking the rules, Strange wants to go and search for her now. The Mordo twins notice this and tell him that rules were meant to be broken, and that they soon may be able to help him. The next morning, Strange finds Cagliostro murdered. The Eye of Agamotto opens to reveal a vision of Cagliostro leaving his hut to warn the Ancient One of grave danger, before being taken out by an obscured figure. Suddenly, a demon attacks Strange, but Jade shows up and the duo manage to defeat it. Though, Strange gets slashed in the process, wounding him with interdimensional energy. The Ancient One shows up and Strange explains that right before Cagliostro was taken out, he was reading a specific book that's not in the hut anymore. Strange finds a copy in the Sanctum's library, and the Ancient One realizes that this all has to do with the Orb of Agamotto, a magic crystal ball that not only sees the past, present, and future, but can also change it, rewriting reality. The Ancient One goes on to explain that Dormammu came into being in the Dark Dimension. His people near the brink of extinction at the hands of Reapers, Demons, and creatures far worse, the Mindless Ones near indestructible beings of pure chaos. When he tried to escape the dimension, he drew the attention of Shuma Gorath, the demon of a thousand worlds. At great personal sacrifice, he found the orb and used its power to shut out Shuma Gorath, contain the mindless ones, and tame the reapers and demons. But the orb called him to change more 
to vanquish his enemies, to remake the dimension as he saw fit. It seduced him, and before long, he wasn't merely content being the tyrant of his dimension, he sought to remake other worlds too. His corruption was so complete that all of the Dark Dimension radiates it. 6,000 years ago, a sorcerer managed to steal the orb from him, but since then, he's been mounting a campaign to steal the orb back, create a permanent gate between our worlds, and hold dominion. Just then, Strange faints as his interdimensional wound festers, and the Ancient One holds a ritual to excise that rot from his body. He awakens to Jade tending to him, before the two share a tender moment and smooch. Soon after, Jade suggests that Strange needs a protector, and the Ancient One agrees because he's come to realize that Cagliostro was killed by another sorcerer, maybe even more than one, but that demon was left specifically to kill Strange. Something is going on. The Ancient One feels it. On a beach in Thailand, a young and handsome Benjamin Wong is partying hard with a beautiful woman on each arm. Since he left the Ancient One's order, his life can't be better. Until he hears a gong in the distance. Nobody else does, and he realizes what's happening. He's being called back. Wong enters the sanctum furious. He never wanted to see these people ever again. But upon hearing what happened to Cagliostro, he's staggered. Jade tries to introduce Strange to Wong, but Strange doesn't want anybody dying for him and isn't interested in having a protector. Wong is also eager to leave. Jade begins to attack Strange to convince him that he does need a protector. As she's about to stop pulling her punches, Wong steps in to defend him. For better or worse, their destinies are now intertwined. Strange and Wong return to Cagliostro's hut, and Strange casts Cagliostro's spell to reveal the magic residue from the past day. He moves past the obscured figure out to the clearing where the figure arrived, and here he can see who it is. Mordo. Strange immediately teleports to Mordo, who reveals that he didn't kill Cagliostro, but he may be the reason he's dead, and explains how he's found partial directions to the orb and that Cagliostro was onto him and Alana. He went to Cagliostro to explain himself, but somebody who was working with Dormammu beat him there and killed him. Mordo wants the orb so they can seal this dimension from Dormammu forever. Generations of his family have died defending against this evil. It's time to end the war. Mordo also points out that the orb could locate Strange's sister. Because of this, Strange grants him one more day to go and find it, before he tells the Ancient One what's going on. As Strange returns to the Sanctum, the Ancient One summons a conclave of every sorcerer on the planet to a skyscraper rooftop in New York. He reveals to everybody that there's a corrupted traitor among them. Through some magic, the traitor is revealed to be al -Faisal. Dormammu begins speaking through him, demanding the orb. He summons a five-story tall mindless one made of stone. al -Faisal is obliterated and everybody else attacks the creature as it smashes the roof of the skyscraper, displacing everybody. In the commotion, Strange is grazed by a stray blast from Mordo intended for the mindless one. Wong, Jade, Strange, and the Ancient One wind up in a tunnel under the city with the creature. Strange takes some water from a broken mane and begins to slowly freeze it, expanding the gaps in the creature's rocky hide little by little. As Mordo and Alana teleport in, the Ancient One tells Strange to stop what he's doing. A Mindless One's destruction would be powerful enough to level the entire city, but the spell has taken on a mind of its own. He can't stop it. Alana steps in, creating a shield around herself and the Mindless One as it explodes with the force of a supernova. Mordo blames everybody for Alana's death and wonders how many more Mordos will need to die for this war. He says that they should use the orb and reveals that Strange agrees with him. He remarks that he'll finish this himself. Later, the Ancient One, disappointed with Strange's temptation to use the orb, banishes him from the Order. He heads to the hospital to check the scar Mordo accidentally gave him taken care of. His doctor happens to be one of the residents he fired years ago. As the doctor probes Strange, he sees that the tissue is black, which can only mean one thing. Mordo is corrupted. 
Meanwhile, Mordo comes to learn that the orb is in the Sanctum Sanctorum. Dormammu calls out to him and tells him that he's been influencing him all along. Mordo then has a vision and sees that he was the one who killed Cagliostro under Dormammu's influence. He's shaken to the core before Dormammu wrestles control of his body away from him, heads to Easter Island, and summons Shumagorath. Just then, Strange bursts into the Sanctum and tells Wong about Mordo. They need to tell the Ancient One. They share a look and rush to the single open door where they find him trying to stop Shumagorath from coming through a dimensional tear. Reapers are pouring out of its mouth. Wong and Jade fight them off as the Ancient One reunites with Strange and tells him that the monster can only be defeated by closing the rift in the dark dimension from the inside. Strange volunteers and is gifted the Cloak of Levitation. He astral projects and soars toward the dark rift as Wong and Jade protect his body. Strange finds himself at the farmhouse from all those years ago. In the sky, he could see the rift. Donna is in the water, exactly as she was the day she died. At first, Strange is shaken and unsure, but quickly realizes that this isn't his sister. The Eye of Agamotto activates to reveal that Donna was a grotesque demon. Strange flies off, blasting the rift, closing it as he approaches, as the demon tries to drag him down. Meanwhile, Shumagorath turns its attention to Strange's body as his hourglass is pretty much out of time. The Ancient One sacrifices himself to the creature, getting eaten while protecting Wang, Jade, and Strange's body. Strange's astral form begins to dim as it separates from his physical body. As he begins to fall away, a hand reaches for him, an Ancient One. He pulls Strange through the tear, naming him Sorcerer Supreme and telling him that the future is his to shape. Just then, the tear collapses, severing Shumagorath from its source of power with it and its creatures dissolving into nothingness as Strange's eyes pop open and Jade kisses him. The sky starts to turn black. Mordo brought the corruption of the Dark Dimension here. This whole battle was just a diversion. Strange flies back to the Sanctum to meet Mordo, who breaks into the Ancient One's vault and finds the orb. They fight for possession before Strange is restrained. Mordo grabs his prize and opens all 99 doors. But in a last ditch effort, Strange tries to appeal to the Coral Mordo he knows to be inside that body and tells him that if he leaves, everything his family has fought for will be lost. Mordo stops. He begins to wrestle back control. Strange breaks free and Mordo falls to the ground with Dormammu forcing him to hurl the orb toward the door to the Dark Dimension, which Strange catches inches before it passes through. Strange feels the orb's power. He could have his old life back. He could have his sister back. He's tempted, but he shakes it off. He has to send Dormammu back, but he has to send Mordo with him. Mordo tells Strange to do what needs to be done. Strange vows to find a way to bring him and Donna back someday, as the orb unleashes a blast that throws Mordo at peace with his fate through the black door. Sometime later, Jade decides to leave the Sanctum. Since the Ancient One is gone, her work here is done. Strange is about to kiss her goodbye, but Wong objects on account of not wanting to see his mother get handsy right in front of him. Strange stands there in shock at this familial revelation. Jade leaves and Wong asks Strange, what now? Strange decides that they need to renovate to make the Sanctum feel more like home. The lights appear one last time and gather around the Chinese restaurant. In a flash, it's replaced. What once was a restaurant is now a three-story townhouse, a new base for the new Sorcerer Supreme. It's interesting with hindsight to see such a different take on Doctor Strange. No Comertage and the movie creating characters like Jade and Alana makes it feel so inauthentic to Strange's comic roots. But then there are deep cuts to comic lore in this movie, like Donna's death. On top of that, the stuff with the Eye and Orb of Agamotto and the Book of Vishanti being key plot devices make the film feel very authentic to those roots. It leaves the script as a real mixed bag. Regardless, Marvel had this script in place. So that raises the question, why did it change? 
in February and March of 2014, as Marvel Studios was ramping up to begin pre-production on Doctor Strange, they were looking for a director along with writers to rewrite the script, presumably to better fit it into the MCU as it existed at that point. By June, Scott Derrickson was chosen to direct the film, based on a strong 90-minute pitch he presented to Marvel Studios. This pitch was generally the story of the final film, completely different from the existing script. This prompted a page one rewrite, which would eventually eventually lead to the movie we know today. That movie went on to launch a beloved character into the spotlight while also paying deep respect to the source material. Outside of a weak villain, this origin story is one of Marvel's best. So in the end, I think it's for the best that the original version of Doctor Strange got rewritten. But that's the story of Doctor Strange's first draft, and the end of yet another episode of Canned Goods. So until next time, thank you so much for watching, be good to each other, and stay Hemmas. Thank you.